So this will be a bit of a different video for this channel. Rather than focus on a specific capture the flag category or problem like we usually do, we are instead going to directly apply a capture the flag skill to a real world-ish problem, specifically the skill of reverse engineering. So without flags to capture, how are we going to directly apply this skill exactly? Well, we are going to reverse engineer and then hack a game. The first technical step of hacking a game typically is going to require some reverse engineering. Why? Because we need to understand the game at a relatively low level in order to break or otherwise influence the game's behavior. For a simple video, I don't want to be unnecessarily hindered by anti-cheats or server-side verifications. So let's hack the first game I ever really got hooked on as a kid. The classic real-time strategy game, Age of Empires. Back in 2002 in Australia, Nutrigrain Serial used to dish out an Age of Empires CD in the box for the full version of the game, which is pretty sweet. Not only that, but you could also play this game online with a dial-up connection back on the MSN Gaming Zone. Shout out to anyone who remembers struggling with lag on there. People were actually already hacking this game back then, so let's figure out how they were doing it just 18 years later. But before we really begin, what is Age of Empires? The game basically allows you to create economies, build armies and fight enemy players. In order to create units or advanced technologies, you need to gather finite resources of food, wood, gold and stone which can be spent. Additionally, you have a semi-predictable and isometric tiled map to explore. Each tile of the game map can be in one of three states. A region of the map which is not explored, note the black tiles here indicate the region is completely unknown. A region of the map with fog of war, note the shadow over the explored tiles here. We know the layout of the land for that tile, but not what is on that land at this point in time. A region of the map which is explored and without fog of war, so you can see the complete map and know everything about the game state for that region. This map is displayed in two forms. The main game window displaying the current view and also the smaller but world complete mini map in the lower right hand corner which gives an overview of the entire game area. During multiplayer games, the status of this map, including player scores, unit locations and resources, is passed between each player as part of a shared simulation. There are no dedicated servers. This is an old school LAN game. When a status inconsistency from a player is identified in this shared simulation, such as a cheater claiming to have additional resources, an out of sync error occurs and all other players agree to drop the offending player. Makes sense, right? They must be cheating after all. This design of Age of Empires creates some interesting attack scenarios. Resource hacking, permitting ourselves to obtain an infinite number of finite resources. Knowledge hacking, permitting ourselves to learn the resource states of other players. And finally map hacking, permitting ourselves to view all regions of the map in real time. Of these scenarios, resource hacking will be noticed by other players in the simulation and will be dropped from the game so that is probably not a good place to start. However, due to the shared design of the game environment, knowledge hacking and map hacking are not really detectable by other players. It's a local and shared game state after all. In this video, we are going to focus on the map hacking scenario. Specifically, we are going to create a hack which reveals the entire map and also removes fog of war. Basically, giving us an unfair advantage in the game we can see where everything is at all times. Let me know in the comments section below if you want more videos on this game hacking topic, such as exploring the knowledge hacking scenario too. Age of Empires already has a number of known cheat codes, which perform cheating actions within the game, ranging from increasing resources, spawning overpowered weapons, or performing modifications to the game's map state. For example, in a game with cheats enabled, to reveal the map, a player can type reveal map into the in-game chat. To remove the fog of war, the player can type no fog, or to spawn a rocket launching car, they can type in big mama. So you might ask, what's the point of hacking the game if you can already just do this as a game function? Well, in multiplayer games, cheats can be disabled and are typically turned off. So in these types of games, you can type in the cheat code and try to apply it, but nothing will actually happen in the game world. The cheat is just ignored. So an approach for how to create our map hack 
is just to reverse engineer and then emulate the existing game's cheat implementations. The game already knows how to perform these hacks, right? And we are hackers after all. So rather than reversing out the entire draw functionality of the game world, which will take a lot of time, let's instead take a shortcut and just figure out how the game already does it. With this approach in mind, a good place to start is to first identify where cheat codes are checked within the game and trace the application flow from this point. Knowing these cheats exist gives us a good base to start looking for and understanding how these interesting cheating functions work. So let's go find them. By utilizing the strings command, we can identify ASCII strings within the main game binary and attempt to identify where those reveal map and no fog cheats are called. When searching for these strings though, we cannot find them within the binary. However, we can identify strings for other known cheat codes. Okay, not a great start. That means there is some level of obfuscation going on for cheats, even in an old school game from 1997. I have to admit, I wasn't expecting that. But we know how to approach reverse engineering problems in CTFs, right? So let's just take the same type of approach here. Using Binary Ninja as a disassembler, we can search for the known game hack string within the binary and trace the cross references to identify where that known cheat code is checked within the code. What we find is an annoyingly long function which is performing a comparison against a number of constants within the binary. Looking at these constants, we can identify known cheat codes as well as some other suspicious looking strings. For example, in this function, we can see that the text Big Mama is compared, and if the condition is met, the application pushes some specific value. So for this cheat, the value of 16 in decimal, and then the function returns. Further tracing this function, we can see that these suspicious strings are resulting in the same type of process. Some comparison is performed, then if the condition is met, a value is pushed to the stack, and later the function returns. So given the similarities in these flows, these suspicious strings are likely to be our obfuscated cheat codes, right? No idea why some cheats are obfuscated and some are not, but this is fairly convenient for our approach. So let's just figure out how this obfuscation process works. Some function somewhere must be messing up our input in order to create the modified string for comparison. But we also must have the original string accessible to this function too, right? After all, this function is comparing both the normal, non-obfuscated, and the obfuscated strings in the same function. Scrolling up to the start of the function, there doesn't seem to be any direct funny business here, so let's check out what's going on in these other functions. The function at 4fde40 is looking pretty interesting. If you spend enough time looking at values in hex, you'll recognize we have a comparison being performed here based on printable ASCII characters. 0x41 is A and 0x5f is an underscore. Since anything outside this printable range causes the function to return, and we can see a loop over characters, we probably have found our candidate obfuscation function. Let's figure out how it works. This code block performs the following steps. First, the function checks whether the character is within the ASCII range of 0x41 to 0x5f. If the character does fall within this range, a lookup is performed based on the character index as part of a transposition table. Then, the function switches the values found in this table from the index using a shift. Lastly, the function checks whether there are any more values to transform from the original input before returning. The transposition lookup is performed at 4fde6b which takes the corresponding item from the dictionary table based on the character offset. Given the previous checks in the block, we know that the minimum value of this offset is 0x41 and the maximum value is 0x5f. Looking at the data within the binary in the known range gives us our lookup table. 0x41 times 4 plus 0x55c8bc gives us 0x55c9c0 and 0x5f times 4 plus 0x55c8bc gives us 0x55ca38. 
If we look at this location range in the binary, we can see what looks like characters from our previously identified suspicious strings. With this understanding of the obfuscation, we can now use the transposition table to figure out which specific check is being performed for both the reveal map and no fog cheats, which we ultimately want to emulate. To do that, let's rebuild that obfuscation function in Python. First, extract the table from the binary based on the indexes we calculated earlier and throw that data into a dictionary. Let's also include a space too, just to make our lives a bit easier. Then, in order to create the obfuscated cheat codes, we just need to extract each character from the dictionary based on the character index, then reverse the value pairs and print out the end result. There we have it, the obfuscated cheat codes for both reveal map and no fog. In fact, we can follow a similar but reverse process to go the other way too, and extract all the obfuscated cheat codes used by the game. Now that we know how to find the cheat codes we care about, we can move on to the next step, which is actually understanding and then later implementing those cheats. But this video is already getting fairly long, so let's take a break and continue this story in the next video in this series. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. It really helps the channel grow if you comment, like and subscribe below. Also, if you are interested in solving Capture the Flag challenges across a range of traditional Jeopardy-based categories, including reverse engineering, make sure to check out 247ctf.com.